door. As you probably know, the 12 lead ECG has 10 wires. If you want to know why, just check the link in the description below. These 10 wire leads come in two major standard colours and names, also known as the colour coding systems. The colour coding systems vary from one area to another. They are known as the American Heart Association, AHA, which is used in the USA. And the other is the International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, which is used in Europe. Please remember they are not confined 100% to a certain area and that before performing any 12 lead ECG, you must always check the color coding standard that is described on your 12 lead ECG machine. Now let us have a look at each of the limb leads one by one with the color coding system. The first system that we will look at is the AHA system. As pictured on the model, the left arm lead is named LA and it should be placed slightly above the left wrist and is black in color. Moving over to the right arm lead, it is named RA and is white in colour and should be placed slightly above the right wrist. Moving down to the right leg lead, it is green and is named RL and is placed slightly above the right ankle. And lastly, the left leg lead is red in colour, is named LL and placed slightly above the left ankle. Now let us swap the colour coding system from the AHA to the IEC. What you will see now is that they are all positioned in the same place as described earlier, but the colours have changed as well as the naming of the leads. Now you will find the left arm lead is named L and is yellow in colour instead of black. The right arm lead is named R and is red in colour instead of white. Down to the right leg lead it is named N and is black instead of green. And lastly the left leg lead is named S and is green instead of red. The last leads are the chest leads. Their names and colours also vary from one system to another. But the one thing they do have in common is their number, like here. As we switch between the systems, you can see the same lead has the same number. They are called V1, C1, V2, C2, V3, C3, V4, C4, V5, C5, V6, C6. Just to keep things simple, we will explain their positioning with the AHA colour coding system selected. The first lead you have to place is chest lead V1, and it is located in the fourth intercostal space on the right border of the sternum. To have a better view or understanding of this, we need to look at the anatomy. To do this, we can switch the 3D model to its secondary view which is the second square button down with the eye icon. Now we can see the ribs as they travel around the chest and how they articulate here with the breastbone, also known as the sternum. As you can see, there is a gap between the ribs that is filled with some muscles, and this gap is known as the intercostal space. If we place V1 directly in the fourth intercostal space, there is a strong possibility of misplacement. So we should do a workaround that will start from the top of the sternum. To see the workaround demonstration, press the play button. The first step in the placement of V1 is to identify what we call the jugular notch of the sternum. That is the depression that you can feel at the base of the neck on the top of the sternum. From there, the second step is to slide your fingers down until you feel a slight elevation. This is the sternal angle of Louis. From here, move your hand slightly to the left and downward, but stop when you reach the first depression. This is the right second intercostal space. From here, slide your hand down another rib to the next depression, which is the third intercostal space, and another rib into the fourth intercostal space. This fourth intercostal space is where you will place V1 on the right border of the sternum. So stop the animation now by pressing the stop button. We will move on to the second lead placement. The second lead to be placed is V2 and it is placed in the fourth intercostal space on the left border of the sternum. It is identical to the method shown for placing V1 and the steps will be repeated but on the left side. To view the V2 demonstration, press play for the placement technique. So, after identifying the jugular notch, slide your fingers down to the sternal angle of Louis in the same way we did for V1. 
But from here, move your hand to the right and slightly downwards into the second left intercostal space. And again, move your hands down another rib into the third left intercostal space. And now move your hand down one more rib. We are now in the fourth left intercostal space. Place the V2 electrode in the fourth left intercostal space on the left border of the sternum. We will stop the animation now and move to the third electrode, which is the V4. Yes, we have jumped from V2 to V4, which is not a mistake. You'll see why shortly. Press play to see the demonstration. So to place V4, firstly you have to locate V2 in the 4th intercostal space. From here you descend another rib into the 5th intercostal space and slide your hand along the 5th intercostal space until you reach this line that is drawn here, labelled the midclavicular line. The midclavicular line is the imaginary line that passes through the midpoint of the collarbone, also known as the clavicle, parallel to the long axis of the body. Now press stop to move on to the next electrode to be placed, which will be V3. V3 is positioned midway between V2 and V4. To start the demonstration, press play and view the technique. First, you need to locate V2. Once you have identified V2, you then need to locate V4. Once you have located V4, slide your fingers to position them midway between V2 and V4. You place V3 here. This is why V3 is placed after V4. It's positioned midway between V2 and V4. The next electrode to be placed is V5. V5 is placed horizontally at the same level with V4 on the left anterior axillary line, which is the line here. We shall continue to play and view V5's placement technique. First you have to identify V4 and from there you need to move your hand to your right on a horizontal plane with V4 and stop on the left anterior axillary line. This is where you place V5. The last electrode to be placed is V6. V6 is placed on a horizontal line at the same level with V5 and V4 on the left mid axillary line. The mid axillary line is this line here that goes through the center of the armpit. Let's continue, press play to view V6 placement technique. Locate V5. When you have identified V5, move your hand to the right on a horizontal plane with V4 and V5. Then stop on the left mid axillary line. Place V6 here. That is all the electrodes placed. Before performing a 12 lead ECG test, always remember, if you are doing it for the first time, always check your technique with your senior or supervisor. When we position the patient, the patient should be laying down on the bed, flat on their back with their legs extended and arms by their side, and the patient must be relaxed as the muscle contractions could have an effect on the 12 lead ECG trace. Always double check the ECG machine colour coding standard. These colours should be illustrated on the ECG machine and you should always check them before performing the procedure. Remember that in order to get a good 12 lead ECG recording, you should place the limb leads slightly above the wrist and ankles and not on the torso. The electrodes need to be applied directly onto the skin on a clean area without scars. I would just like to reiterate once again that if you are performing the 12 lead ECG test for the first time, then it is extremely important to check your technique with your senior. Thank you for watching and don't forget, if you liked our video and feel that a 3D 12 lead ECG pocket reference would help you, just follow the link below and get our app from the App Store. If you would like to see more future 3D medical videos, do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And finally, if you would like to stay updated with all our latest products and offers, subscribe to our page www.3decgleads.com. Thank you.